Next game, okay, GM to play the Von Pop Heal against. Sounds good. Von Pop Heal Gambit if D5 comes and we can sacrifice. Here we go. Yes. Bishop to G5. So now let's see what this Grand Ma Brazilian Grandmaster is going to play against the Von Pop Heal Gambit. So I'm sure he's expect expecting a Black Mardemer, but the point of the Von Pop Heal is if you play Bishop F5, the most natural move, we can play Queen takes F3 after this trade happens. Queen takes, because we hit something here and here. Okay, h6 is actually it's actually a very good move. Bishop h4 is not possible because there's g5 coming, so I have to just... He's encouraging me to get the pawn back, so Stockfish doesn't like it. But I do have to just take the pawn back and keep playing chess. I mean, the position's about equal. It's probably a little bit favorable for black. Black has a bishop pair. Oh, really? The like queen e7? So bishop d3, f5, I think that just drops a piece. So I probably have to break the pin. Um, f5, okay, where do I put my knight? Here or here? I don't think it's that consequential of a decision, but I want to get it right. Yeah, it's really not that big of a decision, honestly. All right, let's go here. Maybe knight can jump in. All right, end game's about equal. Yeah, so c6 had to be played to, to take away my knight's squares. Just castles. So, okay, we're going to have to have a play in the end game. Kind of maybe a tall order because my opponent is a grand master of chess. Let's bring out our pieces. Now, what do we want to do now? I should probably move that bishop, move the rook in. This is a little annoying, because like I could play a3, but I feel like playing a3 just to have to go pawn take c3 is annoying. Okay, fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. I need to, to untangle that somehow. And now we bring our pieces in. Everything's fine. I'm, I'm happy I spent a tempo relieving that tension. Okay, I spent a tempo doing that. Not the end of the world. Okay, Navy 4 is coming. It's going to attack this and this. So let's not allow that. C4 next. Should be pretty solid. Position should be pretty solid here. Not sure how to evaluate this. I mean, the thing is, my opponent has 4 versus 3 over here, but the thing is, they can never create a pass pawn with that. So, like, if we're talking about, like, endgame, long term. Okay, c5 would be maybe annoying at some point. Alright, let's fortify this pawn. Now my knight's free. What do I want to do, though? Like, my knight can go here. I want to do something useful. Play h4 maybe to stop this. I think g5 is a good idea. Take some space over there. Oh, interesting. Wait, okay. I mean, he's offering me to take this pawn, but it's opening a lot of files. So, that's the trade-off. Yeah, it's opening a lot of files and allowing 84. It doesn't seem fun. Seems maybe possible. But honestly, not very fun. So, I mean, I could push this. Yeah, why don't I do that? I push this. So I'm not opening these files for him. Now I got these dark square pawns to go with my light square bishop. And you have the opposite. Oh, no. Oh, my God. That would have been a very bad pre-move. Okay. So now... Okay, this pawn's a weakness. That was my point. I'm going to play an 85, and I'm going to try to... Cause some problems there. So knight d5, you can attack my pawn. King b2, I deal with it very easily. Okay, knight d5. Oh, you play bishop d5, right? Uh. Okay, I mean, it's still playable for me. 
King5, Bishop D5. Okay. Oh, shoot. How much? I have, like, no time. Okay, I want to play C4. Yep, let's do it. C4. Trade off that bishop. There's a good defender over here. All right, what do we got? What do we got? I think my position is quite good. Honestly, I think this is better for white. Rook can maybe come, come across. Both our knights are good. What do I want to do with mine, though? An e5? Okay, don't lose this pawn. Oh, native 4 may be a problem. No, I didn't see it. D6 coming in. Is he going to take it? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, position is quite good. Uh, I'll trade that. I don't know. Oh, I probably have like rookie eight or something. Okay. So this has been pretty good technique, honestly. What do I do? Can I take it and go with hero pawn? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Have faith. Have faith in your pawns. Go. He's going to stop this one, but I have another one. Wait. Uh, wait, is this bad? Or is this going to go? I can't even tell right now. Oh, wait, it's going to go. It's going to go. I stopped it. I'm going to win. Check, take the rock. GG. GG. We did it. We beat a GM. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Sorry if that was loud. <laughs> we got him. We beat a GM with the Von Popio Gambit. You heard it here first. You heard it here. Let's go. Let's go. You guys here, I'll, 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 I'll bring you on. I'll bring you on. Add window capture. Yes. Let's bring, oh my goodness. What do I do? Come on, say hi to YouTube. Say hi to YouTube, baby. Here we go. Anything you want to say. And with, and with no game, oh, sorry. Anything you want to say to YouTube here. <laughs> All right, wait, we can have a look at that game though. <laughs> That's awesome. We beat a Grandmaster with the Von Papiel. All right. So here's the Von Papiel Gambit. H6 is actually like, like like one of the best moves. I mean, you could call it like a declining of the Von Papiel Gambit if there is one, because it's I mean, really obliging me to take this pawn back. And then, I mean, honestly, this was just an endgame. I, I don't know how much I can credit it to, to, to the, um, the, the opening itself. It's just an endgame. I'm, like I said, I'm a tiny bit worse. But we we got him. I mean, I think we really just played a little bit better, honestly. This was this was fun. And this is what I was saying before. You have a light square bishop and light square pawns, right? And so that bishop is naturally going to be restrained. So we have this. It's, a, it's approximately equal position. My opponent plays b5, which is interesting. So the point is, like, if I take it twice, then there's maybe four coming. Yeah, this is bad. Like, the rooks are coming in. Even though there's, like, nothing immediate, there's, like, all these threats. These are weak. And so it wasn't something I wanted to do to give my opponent fun. So c5, I keep these pawns on light squares, and then, then I want to attack them. And I, I was at a massive time deficit here. You'll see here 20 seconds to a minute 20-something seconds. a5, okay, that was a blunder. And the point is now, yes, c4. And this pawn is weak, so we played c5, we fixed that pawn. It's going to be weak, I have a knight that's hanging out here, putting lots of pressure on it. The bishop was hanging out there, defending it, perfectly fine, but we got rid of that bishop. And here, I think my opponent's, uh, my position is just better. And we got him. We got him with a hero pawn, because that was a sacrifice. Brilliant! Two exclaims! 
Two X claims for a hero pawn sacrifice. King F6 was a question mark because it allowed it. But heroic pawns saved the day, and we beat a grandmaster. Okay.